Hi everyone, this is Abby Jo at Forgotten Way Farms and I'm welcoming you today to our cottage kitchen to get some breakfast freezer meals all laid out for the month. I thought I'd first just go over the list of what I'm going to be baking today. I want to make some Amish oatmeal. I want to make some of oatmeal bake muffins and some whole wheat waffles. I want to bake a big old mess of them so that we have them for the freezer so we can just pop them in the toaster. They'll be really easy for the kids. And you know that we love burritos here at this household. So I'm definitely gonna make some breakfast burritos. I'm gonna make some bagel sandwiches, which my family just adores those. And also um, some breakfast enchiladas. And I also have some leftovers and I wanted to show you guys just how I like to throw together a quick dinner. So I might even throw a quick dinner together just so that I have it for this evening for the family while I'm making all this breakfast stuff. So I'm gonna mix up some sugar and make brown sugar, and then I'm also gonna get a whole bunch of my wheat and grind it for whole wheat waffles. When I run out of brown sugar, I take my cane sugar and add molasses to it. I mix it really good in my KitchenAid. You only need a couple tablespoons of molasses, and I usually just eye it. I'm gonna start whipping up this whole wheat waffle recipe. It's right here on my blog. So if you wanna print out the recipe, that's where you go, forgottenwayfarms.com. I'm just gonna mix this up and I'm doubling the recipe, but you can triple it, quadruple it, and get all of those baked up in the waffle iron and put in your freezer so you can have lots of waffles for backup. Oops, got a little shell in there. Waffle batter is such a simple thing to mix up and so worth taking the time to make them ahead. On weekdays, I don't feel like making batter and making a big batch of waffles. It's usually a weekend thing, but having waffles in the freezer is so handy. And I have to ration them because my youngest son loves the whole wheat waffles so much he would eat them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I spray my waffle iron with avocado or coconut oil for the first batch of waffles that go through. And then the rest are good to go through without spray. It's a highly seasoned vintage waffle iron, just like the one my grandma used when we were growing up. I crank it up to high and I like to bake the waffles for four minutes. I love these old waffle irons. This is like a vintage Toastmaster 
they just cook at a higher heat and that's what I love about them. But you definitely need to kind of listen to the sounds. You know, when you first put it in, there's like a sizzle and then it just kind of steams. And I like to put my timer on for four minutes on high. Everybody would have, probably have to adjust that to their own um, waffle iron. But this one in particular is high four minutes and it really makes a nice crispy waffle, which is the way my kids and I like them. I wanted to get the waffles done first so that I can just keep adding them and putting my timer on and cooking them while I'm also working on the Amish baked oatmeal. What I love about this Amish baked oatmeal is just how simple it is and it's so easy to reheat. For kids in the morning, for everyone, it's just really delicious. I'm using two heaping cups here of oatmeal and um, this is actually not quick oats, which my original recipe here says quick oats, but I'm just using the old fashioned oats and that actually will still work. And here's the brown sugar we made earlier. You can see there's little dots of molasses in it. I, have, I would have added a little more molasses and blended longer, but to me it doesn't matter because I'm just baking with this, so it smells so good. <laughs> All right, so you add a half cup. That's a quarter and another quarter cup of brown sugar. And then you're gonna add three quarters of a cup of milk. And mix all that up. Okay. And then I'm just gonna add in this butter. So I'll have this recipe on the blog and that's where you can get all the detailed instructions, but you do add just one teaspoon of cinnamon, one of baking powder, one of salt, that's actually pretty easy to remember, and I love to add vanilla paste is just amazing. There's so much flavor. It's in one heaping spoon here of this teaspoon of this vanilla paste. And then you add about a quarter to half a teaspoon of nutmeg, how much you like. I like a little bit of nutmeg, so I'm going to do half. And then usually you add the butter, which I already added the butter right after this, and an egg. And then you can add fruit or chopped nuts, which I think I'm going to add just some pecans to this today. Yeah, I just love how simple this recipe is. And you could like, oh, you could pop a whole bunch of these inside the freezer. I don't have enough room to put a ton in right now, but these are just so simple. These are really simple just to actually mix up the night before, put in the fridge. But I like to have one in my freezer just for a real quick breakfast. So I chopped up about a cup of pecans for some extra flavor and I decided that I'm gonna add some blueberries and then I'm gonna get this into an oven for 350 for 30 minutes and then we will let it cool and get it ready for the freezer. So that made 32 waffles, a single serve, perfect for the freezer. You can just pop them in the toaster. We love maple syrup and fruit and yogurt and jams on our waffles. And this was a double batch. So a double batch made 32 waffles. We're letting them cool right now and then we'll bag them and put them in the freezer. 
So I have a little bit of this whole wheat flour left that we just ground earlier and I'm going to bag it in a freezer bag and tuck it away in the freezer to keep it fresh for the next time I need it when I'm baking. If I can save myself dishes, I will. Like this pan, I've already melted butter twice in it today and I still need to melt more butter. So I'm just going to keep melting butter, melting butter, and then I'll wash it at the end. So if you can save yourself some dishes and you know you can reuse something, reuse it because it just keeps your dishes a little bit down and then I need now need to get the rest of these dishes washed before I get on doing the rest of my stuff. I've shown you guys in previous videos my pourable crust that I use over pot pie. But what is so amazing and versatile with that recipe is you can make like a breakfast mixture Put it in with like potatoes and sausage and eggs and pour that crust over or you can have veggies and potatoes and bacon and then you can pour that crust over it's so versatile you can make so many wonderful um, breakfast type dishes regular dishes and then even taking leftovers so i have always saved my leftovers and i make a pot pie or like a hodgepodge pie so today it's going to be a little bit more of a hodgepodge pie and that's what we're going to have for dinner. So I save all our mashed potatoes from the night before. We always usually have like just like a bowl full of things. And so um, it's just the perfect way. I'm going to scrape that in a second. But this is meatloaf and corn. And then I'm going to add peas because, you know, I love adding peas to things. So I'm going to put all of this together in the bowl, mix it up put it into a big pan, and then I'm gonna make that pourable crust, pour it over, and we're gonna have a delicious pot pie or whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> but it's definitely um, a really doable dish for breakfast too. I make this casserole once a week and my kids love it. I always use leftovers, usually from a chicken or roast dinner. I also love making a breakfast version of this casserole. Today I use leftover meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and veggies. We're going to get started on the portable crust for this delicious casserole, but I wanted to share with you guys Lately, I've been making my own butter, which I've been having so much fun. So we have two sticks of butter here, which is of a cup, and I'm going to melt this down, and then I'll add it to the flour and salt and baking powder and all that good stuff to make the topping. But soon in a video, I'm going to be showing you a lot of how I make my dairy. I've been making lots of feta cheese lately, yogurt, butter. So I'm definitely going to be sharing you guys some of um, that in the future. And also, <laughs> I don't have butter paddles, so... I kind of invented my own little procedure of getting buttermilk out. I just kind of pick it up and then I like throw it and it's kind of a kneading procedure that I use. Whoops. <laughs> and it's really, really fun. And I've really been enjoying getting butter um, stocked away in my freezer made with cream and it's just delicious. To save on butter, I will often replace half a cup of the butter with olive oil and it works great in this recipe. The waffles have cooled, so I'm going to bag them up. I reuse my freezer bags, except for when I have meat in them. But for waffles, bread, vegetables, fruit, 
I will wash and reuse the bags. So we have about a pound each of the bacon. I'm gonna get those in the oven. I like to do them at 400 for 10 minutes. It gets them nice and crisp. And then I'll just put them on a plate and let them cool before I'm ready to use them. And then again, these are actually about, both of them together is two and a half pounds of ham. These are actually pre-cooked and smoked. So all I have to do is really just warm them up in the oven and then I will dice them all up and use them. You can use how much meat you want, but for me, I'm gonna try to make just, you know, probably like 12 of my very large um, burritos, and then I'm gonna make some enchiladas, and then about eight bagels, eight to 10 bagels, seeing how many I have, and then I'll just get all of that wrapped up and make the rest of the meat that's left over will be turned into enchiladas. So while that bacon is cooking and then the ham, we're gonna get then these chocolate oatmeal bake little pucks that we're gonna make. They're like muffin size, but they'll kind of bake probably more denser and flat, just as like a little serving. And then we can freeze those individually or put them all in a Ziploc bag and then you can pull them out and warm them up again. So we'll get this baking going, just like I said, it's really nice to keep things in the oven and other things going. So there's always food cooking while you're doing other things just gets things done a lot faster and it helps you stay organized and, and it gets just um, all the food cooked so you can keep cooking through the day. I need to check on the bacon. Lots of steam coming out while checking on the bacon. The kitchen smells really good right now. These chocolate oatmeal bakes are gonna be nice and chocolatey. The bacon is all cooked. Now for the ham and a few leftover bacon pieces, and then all the meat will be done. I just squirt in some oil and rub it around with some paper towels. I also use butter or coconut oil. I wouldn't use paper liners with this baked oatmeal because it gets stuck to the paper. They come out of the pan just fine when oiled.
I doubled this recipe and had some leftovers, so I put into a small cake pan. We're going to do the sheet pan eggs right now, which is a really super simple way to get a whole bunch of eggs done. And the way I like to start out with is just spraying it with a little bit of, this is avocado oil, but you can, you know, use anything, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, and you just put a layer on. And then I'd like to take some parchment paper Put another layer of that on top, just like that. It just helps to keep things really nice and clean and easy to, and then spray it on top of that. And then I just take a paper towel and I just kind of rub that all around. There you go, just like that. Your pan is all ready for the eggs. I like to take about 18. 12 to 18, depending on how many I want here. But I'm gonna crack all of these with a little bit of cream and blend them up in my Vitamix. And then just pour it onto the sheet and bake it for 350 for 20, 30 minutes. And we'll have a beautiful pan of eggs. It depends on your stove too. My stove cooks a little fast, so I'm gonna have to keep my eyes out and actually see how long it takes. I have a beautiful source of eggs from my neighbor down the road. It's so nice having local people that raise chickens. Right now we don't have chickens because we put in all our time on our land, fixing up the house, getting the gardens ready. We're gonna get chickens soon, but I gotta tell you, we have such a good economical source of eggs just down the road. And I love it when people can work in a community and be able to buy food, trade food, and all that good stuff. And so. If you know somebody that sells eggs, buy eggs from them. Get in, get in that food security of just um, being able to know your neighbor, know a friend, and be able to buy good, wholesome eggs. It's a great source of getting your eggs. It's from a neighbor, friend, farmer's market. You just know where your eggs are coming from and they're just really good quality. This is a nice little hat because you don't spill. It's just filling it up right inside of the oven. These sheet pan eggs are done. You can see right here, they look beautiful. They took about 15 minutes in the oven and I got times a little mixed up because I was cooking all these different things. The sheet pan eggs are 15 minutes to 18 minutes in the oven. Just kind of keep an eye on them. Another thing with sheet pan eggs that is really nice is you can add vegetables and seasoning and cheese and then just cut it up and serve that way. But I did plain eggs today because I'm making bagels sandwiches with this. So that's why we just have plain old egg here. I love bagel sandwiches. They're a total treat. I cut the bagels in half and then I just put the egg on and then cheese and bacon. And then I like to take a little mayo and a little chipotle and mix it together for a little spice. And then I add a little bit of that into the bagel sandwich and it just makes a really, really good sandwich. I know a lot of you guys have asked if how um, we reheat things and basically I put everything that I want to eat the next day in my fridge from the freezer and I let it defrost. And in the morning or sometime that day, I will put it in the oven and I reheat it. Now I know a lot of you guys have microwaves. You can totally microwave burritos and 
um, these wonderful bagel sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to do it in the oven, it's really simple. You just unwrap the saran wrap, put them on a sheet and just put them in the oven. I like to do things for like 350 for about 10, 15 minutes and I get a really good melty bagel. The oven is freed up now, so I'm gonna get the chocolate baked oatmeal into the oven. We like a little kick to our bagel sandwiches. However, you can always forgo the chipotle and you could add mayo or butter and then layer from there. So I put sauce on all the everything bagels and then I had four like whole wheat raisin ones and I'm um, gonna basically, I'm not gonna put any sauce on those. And as you saw, I put grated cheese on these because I didn't have any sliced cheese on me right now. <laughs> so I just used the grated cheese that I had in my freezer. You know I love storing grated cheese in the freezer. It's so handy to have on hand when you need to make pizza, make casseroles, and you, you know, since this is gonna be reheated, it doesn't matter if it's a slice of cheese or grated cheese, they'll reheat really beautiful and get all melty. The only thing about doing the grated cheese, as you can see, there's like a little pile right here, and I am constantly cleaning my counters, and I wipe them down, I sanitize them. So the counters are clean. I'm gonna take this little bit of cheese and all the seasoning that came off the everything bagels, and I'm gonna put it in my scrambled eggs for the burritos because waste not, want not. Tea time. You know we love our little cozy breaks. Today I made a hibiscus tea with honey. It was refreshing and we needed it. Already we've had a long day of filming and cooking together with still more to go. My sous chef cutting meat while I get things put away. So the baked chocolate oatmeal is out and all you do is run your knife along the muffin and then it just pops right out. And these just need to cool and then you're gonna freeze them. And then you got little helpings that you can either eat just defrosted or you can heat them up in the oven or the microwave all warm. And you can add fruit, whipped cream, cream, milk, however you like to eat them, and they're all ready for you. One of the things I love about getting freezer meals ahead of time is just it saves me time later on. And sometimes it can seem overwhelming spending an entire day cooking or an entire afternoon. So you don't have to do that. I've said that before in many videos. Just double whatever you're making, triple it, quadruple it. 
and then put the rest in the freezer. That's a way that you can just do one dish at a time. And I understand that not everybody has time to do an afternoon or all day cooking. I really enjoy doing these videos for you. My husband and I, it's fun to cook together. And uh, he does a lot of the chopping when I'm doing something else. And it's just nice. It's, it's sunny, it's beautiful today. The house is warm. There's tons of snow outside, but it's just a cozy day to get baking done, get our freezers full. And like I said, it frees me up. It frees me up for other things that I can do during the week. One of the things that I love about getting all this food in my freezer, getting everything stocked up, batch cooking is just as much a part of my life as um, bulk shopping is and getting it all in there helps me to have more time. Like I've said before, but you think time for what? It can be time for anything, learning, self-care, more time with your kids. I love having all this food in the freezer because a lot of times we like to just go on a road trip on a whim and on the weekend or something. And then we don't have to buy food and spend money. It's just the gas to go see a new place. And we just fill our little freezer box, cooler box up in the car and we take off and it feels good when you know you've got you know, bagel sandwiches or burritos to go or muffins or whatever you have in your freezer. And it saves money and you're not, you know, out at a restaurant, even though I enjoy a good restaurant once in a while, but it's really nice. And that's, that's part of this. It's part of even my slow living philosophy of just being able to slow down and take your time to do things. And I like to cook and I enjoy it, but sometimes I want to break. And that is why I love freezer meals. That's why I'm gonna keep doing freezer mills and canned food and all that because sometimes I just wanna go take a walk and hike out with my kids somewhere and get back late and then I know there's something in the freezer or canned goods or something that I already have made that I can whip up a really good nutritious breakfast or lunch or dinner. As you can see here, I am using the pans I baked bacon in and now I'm roasting potatoes in it. It will give them some flavor and it keeps me from having to wash the pans again. This is the last step before we start making all our burritos and making the breakfast enchiladas. I like to make breakfast enchiladas next to making the breakfast burritos because they basically have the same interchangeable ingredients. I can bake a whole bunch of potatoes, I can get eggs done, I can have meat chopped up, I can have all the fillings and then I can just make burritos and then make the enchiladas which are basically just breakfast burritos with homemade enchilada sauce cheese, and then I like to put a little bit of green olives on top. I have two pans going on at the same time, scrambled eggs and a homemade enchilada sauce. My little man jumped in to help me so I could keep making the enchilada sauce. All right, everything's ready to start making all the burritos and the breakfast enchiladas. I have this big bowl here and I put in some refried beans, two cans, and I'm gonna put this entire thing, the sheet right here of potatoes in for the enchiladas because they're gonna be breakfast enchiladas. I like adding refried beans or canned beans because I just enjoy that 
with any kind of enchilada, even a breakfast enchilada. And then we're going to divide up the eggs and a little bit of meat, and that's going to go in this bowl. I'm going to stir all this up. It'll be the filling for the enchiladas. And then the rest is going to go into the burritos. I'm stuffing my enchiladas with corn tortillas and layering them in taco style. I know some people even do a lasagna style by stacking and filling layer by layer their tortillas. I find that warming the tortillas first really helps to fold them easier. Everything that you see here, we will have a link. It will be in the description below. It will be the first link, super easy to find, for all the recipes right to our blog at ForgottenWayFarms.com. I have been seeing so many of you guys that watch, share on YouTube, head over to my Instagram and leave me sweet messages. Thank you for everybody that has been stopping by Instagram. I really appreciate it. I would love to hear below in the comments what you guys like to put in your freezer for breakfast meals or dinner or lunch or whatever. I love hearing your guys' ideas. So I think we got a fair amount done today. Here's the bagels, sandwich, bagel sandwiches with bacon and egg and cheese. And then we have the baked oatmeal, chocolate, peanut butter, banana, baked oatmeal, individual serving sizes for the freezer. We've got the old fashioned Amish baked oatmeal with pecans and blueberries. I've got two breakfast enchiladas here. Just gotta put the tin foil on and get them in the freezer. I was able to make 32 packages of individual waffles. And also we're able to make about 12 of these very stuffed burritos. These are like a meal and one burrito. And on top of all that, I was able to take leftovers and make the dinner casserole. So I'm really happy. Thank you guys so much for joining me in the cottage kitchen today. I love it when I'm able to cook, bring you along with me. I hope this inspires you guys to just get in the kitchen, get some things in your freezer so you have time to do other things during the week. I love cooking, but I also like a break. So it's great to have all this in the freezer for healthy homemade meals. I was also gonna make baking powder biscuits, but you know what? I'm gonna call it good for today. I'll make that on another video. Thank you guys, and we'll see you guys soon.